Hello, everyone. I'm Katie Cullen with After Buzz TV, and I am here at RTX with Shannon McCormick. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I uh, I have a little bit of a cold, but um, I'm yeah. Um, so don't get too close. But uh, but I'm having a great RTX. What's your favorite thing about the con bin so far? Oh, uh, you know I. Um, on Friday, I didn't have a lot of panels, so I just went and attended panels, and um, I got a, a lot out of seeing Fred Siebert from Frederator. Um, I got to interact with him and talk to him a little bit, um, and that was that was really really inspiring. Uh, and then you know the usual fan interactions are always always fantastic. Yeah, you went to our panel on Friday, and we are super grateful for that. Thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun to just like you know play around with you guys. And for the people who might not have seen that panel, I think one of the favorite things you talked about was your audition for the quartermaster for uh, Camp Camp. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so um, I, um, uh, uh, Maggie uh, called me in, or Maggie and Jordan called me in to audition for the quartermaster. There was some early art sketches. I don't think he quite looked like he looks now in what they gave me, or, or maybe they or maybe they didn't even give me any art. I, I can't remember. But they were like, you know, just make him super gross. He's a little bit like um, Billy Bob Thornton in Sling Blade. And he's just like, you know, and he's got a hook for a hand that can swap out into all these different things over the course of, you know, the show. Um, so come do it. And I came and I auditioned and, um, you know, read some lines. And then it just, it, it, it kept going. It we got a little, it was like, wait, this is, What's, what's happening? I was like, well, I, did you guys get enough for the audition? And they were like, oh, no, no, you got we, we you got the part. Now we're just turning it into a recording session. You got the part about five minutes ago. And I was like, oh, well, you didn't tell me that, guys. I thought it was just an audition. <laughs> so um, so that, yeah, so the um, my first day in, which was an audition, turned into uh, recording session one for the quartermaster, which was like the first... Um, you know, the first couple episodes that the Quartermaster was in. So um, that is not a typical process, um, even for Rooster Teeth, but it, it turned out that way. And what inspired you for the Quartermaster voice? Where did that come from? Um, just like, you know, just like super gross. Um, just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think the Billy Bob thing was, uh, was key, that little line note in the character description. Um, and then uh, just various, you know, disgusting... Uh, sounds um, is a is a huge influence. They have me snort a lot, you know. Like the <laughs> the, um, the the quartermaster definitely has a little bit of a post nasal drip problem, and he's always like sort of uh, snorting. That's all. That's all real. That's all me doing that. Um, yeah. So just sort of yeah, gross, disgusting guy with a hook for a hand. So he's everyone's gross, terrifying uncle crossed with the creepy pasta about the car door and the guy with the hook for a hand. He basically yeah, and he's been at the camp forever. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, I, uh, and I joked about it on the panel too, um, potentially immortal, timeless, uh, cryptic, we don't know exactly what his deal is, he's Hillbilly Ospin. Um, so <laughs> I, they're the, the sort of, yeah, they're like, they're cousins maybe, or brothers, they're um, just like, they went slightly different paths. Well, and speaking of Ospin, <coughs> Ruby season three ended on one heck of a bang, mm -hmm. and I know we don't quite have a lot in the works for season four yet, so... Where do you think Ozpin is? Well, okay, so here's the deal. I I kind of know, and I can't talk about it. Um, it's um, complicated. It's complicated, is what I'll say. Um, it's like a Facebook like, relationship. Like a Facebook relationship, it's complicated. Um, I do not think that I have seen anybody. Uh, predicted out there on Tumblr or anything like that, which is unusual because usually if you go through the tags or you look at stuff, there's usually like one person who nails something like totally like six months in advance. Like uh, one time I actually sent Miles a screenshot of somebody's Tumblr post and it just was like, holy crap, dude, check this out. Because it was so eerily right on the money for uh, what was going on. I can't even remember what it is. I could probably look at my phone. Um, but I haven't seen anybody get the thing yet, so. We'll, uh, we'll try and find it and link it in the comments for the interview later, but that, that's impressive. Yeah, oh, impressive that nobody's predicted it yet? Uh, that someone predicted it and that no one's predicted what happened to Ozpin. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. So we'll, so it's, it's I, I'll be honest, I don't, um, I know that season four writing is uh, in progress and, um, so I think there's still some things being figured out as we as we go. But the the general shape of things I kind of know, and um, it's going to be 
surprising for a lot of people. All right. Provided that he's still out there somewhere because not ruling anything out and no spoilers, where would you like his character arc to go this coming season, the future, whenever, if he shows back up? Uh, hmm. I can't really talk about it. Kind of a labyrinth of a question, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I can't really talk about it because, yeah, anyway, that, that, done. Okay, that's... Hi out there. <laughs> that's Hi, Jen Brown. Hi, Jen. <laughs> it's a party in here. It's a party in, here in the media room. So that is probably... Oh, oh. Okay. Would you like to see him in Ruby Chibi? And if so, what would you like to see him do? Oh, okay. So, uh, I would like to see him in Ruby Chibi. Um, chances are pretty good that that's going to happen. And he says, looking at Jen off camera. And, uh, and um, yeah, uh, what I would like to, s yeah, um, you know, he's just being adorable right back. So I think that would be uh, that would be what I'd like to see him do. I, I will say that what Jen Brown is in the room here, and I'm kind of looking off camera at her a little bit. Um, so so. Uh, I don't think any of us really knew um, what was in the works for, for Ruby Chibi and that it was like what was going to happen. So like seriously, like about three weeks after uh, Pura died and Jen was sort of processing her grief, she texted me and she's like, eh, I just went back in to record for Pura and Ruby Chibi. And I'm like, what? What? And she's like, yeah, no, it's like it's a sole separate little universe and uh, Pura's not dead in that one and I can go do her lines again. She's like, I'm never going to play this beautiful character again. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> but a different property. But uh, well, that's a quick turnaround. Yeah, it was pretty quick. I was like, she was like, I just recorded Pura. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, this new thing ruby chibi um so surprise bet you thought you'd seen the last of me yeah exactly i'd love to see ruby chibi address what's in ospin's mug oh uh, maybe that will be where we get it although i don't know if what happens ruby what happens in ruby chibi i don't think is canon oh no they've resolved any of those things but it's not canon so it's probably lemonade or something in ruby chibi <laughs> um yeah it can be whatever we want it to yeah, be right, whatever I still think that's a cl ice clinking in uh, season three when he breaks up Crow and uh, and and uh, and Winter's fight. Pretty sure that that is uh, ice in his cup. I think he's drinking iced coffee with ice cubes in it. I was gonna say Moscow or, Mule, but okay. Oh yeah, yeah, something like that too. Possibly. That's how you get through a day as a headmaster at right, this. Right. Exactly. Oh my God, you people make me drink. I, that was a little quartermaster. Oh my. <laughs> I gotta take a drink right now. Some one of those things. It's like one of those have a Snickers commercials. Right, right exactly. Better. Yeah, now it feels better. That's awesome. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about Red versus Blue because sure. I'm terribly biased and Walsh is my favorite character. Yay. I'm sure you know that. Which is how I think we started to interact way back when on Tumblr. Yeah, I think in I started Agent, trolling you back. In, yeah, in the Agent Washington tag or uh, Wash Loves Cats or whatever, you know. Um, and that's, yeah, that's how we first connected that's how i kind of figured we didn't have any wash coming up in the next couple episodes for red versus blue because you're not trolling people yet i'm not trolling people yet yeah i'm, I'm, I'm trying to be i'm trying to be a little bit better about that um i also don't like i uh, i said um in one of the panels i was on i don't really know what the release schedule is so um yeah i don't know what's 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 coming up like um i know the rough outline of Hey, you know, uh, oh, the Funhouse guys did this, and um, you know, Miles and Miles and Gray did this, and and um, you know, Jen was in the the Lego one, but I don't know when they're being released at all. So, and I'm not a hundred percent sure on mine. I keep hearing September, um, but um, yeah. Is there anything you can tell us about your upcoming episode? Because you were able to write an episode for this season. Yeah, I was. Um, what I told people before was. I, um, after the improv panel last year, some people came up to me and we're just talking about red versus blue and some characters that they like. And I went away and maybe a week later, I just, I, I shot Miles a message, not intending to write the show or anything like that, but I knew there was going to be this anthology season coming up. I don't know if it was known at the time of by the fans at RTX last year? I think so. Did they know it was going to be an anthology? They announced it at RTX okay. last year. Okay. So that, so I, I sent Miles a message and said, hey, you know what would be, uh, I just, you know, for, coming out of the panel, I know if you did an episode about X, um, it would be well received by the fans. 
Um, and he was like, oh, you know, cool. Hey, th hey thanks for, you know, that, that's, that's cool. And then, um, oh, you know, a couple months went by and uh, he, he contacted me back and said, hey, you know, the idea that you had, it's not going to work, but that was a good idea. Do you have any other ideas for an anthology? We should open it up to you. Um, do you want to do you want to pitch us something? So I went away and I thought up of about you know two or three ideas. Um, one of them uh, pitched to Miles and Cohen, who's the producer of RVB, and they both really liked it and it got greenlit. So I went and wrote it. So, um, but I can't really talk about. I, I I shouldn't give any spoilers about what it's about. I will say, no, that's a that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I'll say that's it. Yeah. Can you tell us anything about the ideas that didn't quite make it? Uh, well, I don't want to say the, especially the one that um, idea X. Yeah, idea X, because then it will tip my hand that that isn't the episode that I did write. I don't know what uh, does that make sense that they'll know. Yeah, that it's not an X episode. Um, boy, what was the other idea that didn't take? Um, I can't now. I can't even remember. Obviously, it wasn't good enough to make it. It was something about, what, I don't know, I'm getting weird. I'm supposed to bunt? What's happening? <laughs> Wrap it up? It's not, it's not, that's all. I'm messing with you. God damn it, Jen. <laughs> What's happening? We're, we're getting steel I, third so, signals from Jen Brown on the sideline here. What, what, what? <laughs> all right. So I think I, she wants you to steal third. Yeah, steal third. <laughs> um, I, I will say that I purposefully did not put Jen Brown or any of her characters in my script because she messes with me so much. No, uh, I will I say I thought this. that'd be a good opportunity Jen, to mess with Jen, her. Jen, Jen uh, does not voice act in my episode, but it had to do with um, the nature of the story. It was lo logistics. Um, I will say that some voice actors who, uh, who we have a bunch of new voice actors uh, in, the, in what I wrote, and I think that you are gonna love them. And we also have some people returning who you might not expect to return, and I th and that will be pleasant for a lot of people as well. So that's what I can that's what I can say. So it is not a so I guess I've tipped my hand a little bit. It is a not an entirely brand new um, invention in the RVB universe. There are characters that we have seen before, and that's all I'm going to say. Well, I think that's been the case for just about every episode in the yeah. anthology yeah, so I think far. I think that's true. So, so I guess no, no spoilers in my spoilers, but yeah. So look forward to that at some point in the future. At some point, September-ish sometime. Future. Future, in the fall. So given how uh, season 13 ended, mm -hmm. where do you think we can go from here? We, they talked about in the panel yesterday, they're not sure if they're going to continue a storyline. They're not sure where they're going, but... Pie in the sky, what would you like to see? Where would you like Wash's character to go? Um, I think, like, I, I'll be honest. I kind of think that um, Wash, uh, as a character in the way that RVB is structured, I think, I think he's kind of, I think he, he's about ready to retire. I th um, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll just say this because I think- um, You're scaring me. No, no, I just think that like, um, he was so important in the, you know, in the, in the reconstruction uh, era stuff. And then obviously he was important as a bridge um, in the freelancer season stuff. He was helpful in the chorus thing, but he was, he was, I just kind of along for the ride a lot of the time. And, and, and no knock, I mean, there's a lot of characters to keep up with in the Chorus trilogy uh, seasons. But I think, he's, I think he's about ready to hang it up. He doesn't have anything left to prove. He doesn't have, any, he doesn't have any, he's, you know, he's sort of, you know, mentally better. Uh, he's been a good leader. He's helped instill a little bit of soldierly values in, you know, in Tucker. And he, um, he, um, and his relationship with Locus, he has sort of like, you know, managed to, you know, realize that, um, there, but for the grace of God, go I. Yeah, exactly. And, but that he didn't go there yeah. and, um, and that, you know, and, I don't really know what else you could, I, to be as a as a as a character. I don't know what else you can do with Wash. 
He doesn't need to carry a plot anymore. He can just be part of the blue team. Yeah, he can just be part of the blue team. Um, But then, as a part of the blue team, he doesn't. He's not super funny except for that he's uptight. Um, So, um, so maybe that's it's worked for Simmons for a decade. That's true. He's just the mother hen character that um, gets to come in and scold them every once in a while for like and be the be the voice of the audience, being like, "You guys are idiots." Um, But um, but yeah, I don't think he needs to carry. There's he doesn't have any. He doesn't have much more plot left to carry. I don't think. Um, yeah. All right. Anything else you'd like to say to the fans before we wrap? Um, I am uh, super excited uh, for you guys to see my episode um, because um, I think I think you guys are really going to like it. Or my it's it's more than one, but I want you know it's a it's a it's a your story it, my story. I'd like you to see my story, my contribution. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to you guys seeing my uh, uh, performance in uh, Day 5. I'm in the last couple of episodes of Day 5. Nice. Yeah, I'm in... I'm do in, you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, it was great. I, it's a, I mean, it's a drama, so I do not... I, this character, um, given everything that I've done in Red vs. Blue or in, in for Rooster Teeth, this is the least humorous character I have ever played, as in... There is almost no humor, <laughs> like zero. Um, so and uh, and I think it did a good job. So um, I'm in- excited to see let you guys see that because that's not my natural thing to be not funny, right? <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, uh, that I'm lo- I'm really looking forward to those episodes coming out. All right. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Katie. We'll see you guys later.